Hello, everybody. I'm blatantly stealing out of the Formula One Rejects podcast because at the end of the season, the F1 season, uh, Jamie and Enoch do a section where they review every driver on the grid in one word. I am going to do the same here for the NASCAR grid, except the only problem is uh, if I was to come up with one word for however many drivers started a race this year, I'd be here for, well, quite a long time. So I'm only going to do the top 40 and then, of course, give my vote for the reject of the year in NASCAR. Um... By the way, if any of you don't listen to the Formula One Rejects podcast, please do so at www.f1rejects.com if you are, of course, have any interest in Formula One at all and want to hear uh, what is seriously some of the best F1 punditry there is, period. Also, they do call me a girl in one episode, which I think is hilarious, so uh, do check them out. Okay, so I'm going to start my one-word reviews right off the top. Number one, Juan Pablo Montoya. And my word for Montoya, intimidating. And I picked intimidating because, well... Montoya punched well above his weight in the Earnhardt Ganassi car, which was a piece of crap, really, all year. And uh, it was very, very intimidating for other drivers, I think, to see uh, the Earnhardt Ganassi car that far up the grid. And also, his driving style reminded me of another person that was called the Intimidator way back when. So that's why I picked Intimidating for Montoya. Number two, Mark Martin. And my word for him is Vintage. And Mark Martin, as he's gotten older, he's gotten a little better, just like alcohol. Well, at least what I've heard about alcohol anyway, especially wine. Um, The older it is, the better it is. Something along those lines. Um, Anyway, he pretty much proved age was just a number. He well, truly was the best driver in the Hendrick stable. Um, uh, He did a lot of things with that car that really should not uh, have been done with that car, especially seeing that Mark Martin is, I believe, 50 years old. Number three, and I have, I'm going to get some uh, ones for this, some hate mail probably, Kurt Busch, and my word for him is pits. And that's because his season was kind of in the pits. Yes, he had 21 top 10s, uh, 10 top 5s, and a couple of wins, but Kurt Busch's big problem was his pit crew just didn't seem to be um, pulling their weight, and that's where he lost most of his races, I think, was in the pits. Also, um, if you listen to some of his (laughs) in-car audio, I think his team morale was also in the pits. And uh, my number four, and and this is going to be a bit out of left field, Marcus Ambrose, the Aussie, all the way up to number four, well and above punching above his weight here. My word for him, Gladiator, because he just kept on fighting, even though he had a car that really did not deserve to be in the top ten. He put it there there only seven times, but the point is is that uh, this is a car that should not have been this high on the grid, because this is is basically Michael Waltrip racing. And um, while they do have a lot of money at Michael Waltrip Racing, they don't know what they're doing with it. However, Marcus Ambrose himself did a fantastic job seeing as his team were a bunch of morons for the most part. Number five, Brad Keselowski. And uh, despite only making 15 of the 36 races, he's all the way up at number five. And my word for Keselowski, Charger. Because, um, well, he did charge through the field uh, a number of times, and also he charged up to the front and to get his lone win at Talladega. And also, that's what he'll be driving next year, a Dodge Charger for Roger Penske. And uh, number six, A.J. Allmendinger. My word for him is Casper, referring to Casper the Friendly Ghost, if anyone's aware of, of that. A.J. Allmendinger both striking me as someone who's very friendly, but also had a tendency to vanish. I honestly didn't recognize him all season. Um, he was just not even there half the time. Number seven, Tony Stewart. And my word for Stewart is Yanis, referring to the Roman god of, I think, time or something. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know he has two faces. And uh, that's why I, that I gave Tony Stewart Yanis, because his personality seemed to change quite often. But I haven't gotten to the four-time champion yet, the four-time champion that everyone is hyping all over about, Jimmy Johnson. But here he is, number eight, and my word for him is Knaus. Simply put, without Chad Knaus, he would not have won this championship. I know that when you, when you do have uh, championship-winning teams, you are supposed to win them with the best driver, the best team, and the best crew chief. But in this case, it seemed as if Jimmy was relying more upon Chad Knauss than actually doing all the work himself. At least that's what it seemed to me, because most of the races he won were based on what Chad Knauss was able to do and not what he was able to do. Number nine, I have Denny Hamlin, and my word for Hamlin is resurrected, because I think this has been Hamlin's best season so far in his career. Uh, He resurrected uh, his image in the eyes of Joe Gibbs Racing by truly stamping himself as the number one inside the team. Even though most of the money is going for is going over to Kyle Busch and Joey Logano, Hamlin, I think, is the most talented driver in the in the Joe Gibbs stable as of right now. Uh, speaking of drivers who are believed to be number one in the stable, Casey Kane is number ten, and my word for him is well, it's not really a word; it's three words: hide and seek. Because that I think kind of described his whole season. He uh, 
he wasn't terribly consistent, but uh, when you found him, he scored some big results. So hide and seek for Casey Kane. Number 11, I have Jeff Gordon, and my word for him is automated. And that's because I don't think he ever transcended the ability of the car. Uh, he only won once this season, uh, 25 top 10s, but that's still what the car was capable of doing. So my word for Jeff Gordon, automated. Number 12, I have Ryan Newman, and my word for him, Mike Oldfield. Actually, just Oldfield, but I was sort of referring to Mike Oldfield because Newman is sort of, well, he is sort of getting on the older side, and uh, he's, I don't even think he's 30 years old. He might just, oh, I don't know how old Ryan Newman is, but it really does seem as if he's sort of old hat, you know? No one's really... Um, really amazed at anything Ryan Newman does these days. And even though he is driving what's essentially a Hendrick Motorsports car, he didn't do a whole lot with it that I didn't think couldn't have been done by another driver. He still did a good job, though, and that's why he's at 12. 13th is a driver who did very well despite having a crap car, and that's Clint Boyer. And my word for him is yo-yo, because that described his whole season. He was up and down all over the place. Didn't win a thing, but uh, still drove very well. And uh, number 14, I have Matt Kenseth, and my word for him, Viagra. He's, his season started very well, did not end well. Uh, number 15, Greg Biffle. My word for him, typical. Greg Biffle, consistently inconsistent. 10 top 10s, or yeah, 10 top 5s, excuse me, 16 top 10s, 0 wins. And keep in mind that there are 36 races in the whole season. So, yeah, Biffle was, whenever he ran well, he ran very well, but he just didn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary. Number 16 is Kyle Busch all the way down here in 16th, and my word for him is idiot, because I think he made an idiot of himself quite often by focusing more on the Nationwide Series, which, by the way, that is actually the first time I've, I've referred to that series as such. Um, the Nationwide Series, he focused more on that in the trucks, and he did his cup effort, and it really hurt him, and he was busy getting into fights with other drivers and calling them idiots, and the driver I'm thinking of the most, the driver he called an idiot, Brian Vickers, is number 17, and my word for Vickers is Saturday, because it seemed to me that was more important to Brian than uh, Sunday, or race day, rather. Um, Vickers, he had six poles, and his only win came from pole. So, uh, he made the chase, but didn't do crap in it, really. Number 18, Carl Edwards. My word for him, faceplant, because I'm pretty sure that's what everyone's expecting him to do when he does those backflips off his car. But this season brought Carl Edwards down to earth, but he seems to have, um, one good year, one bad year, one good year, one bad year, and this was just his bad year. So a faceplant for Carl Edwards. Number 19 is Jeff Burton, and Jeff Burton, for those of you who aren't aware, has long, uh, stated that, um, he, uh, wants to go into politics after he retires from NASCAR, so I have to go with a politically themed word here, and my word for him is recount, because I think he want, he'll want to recount what everything, uh, what went wrong with his season. Uh, other than that, kind of average for Jeff Burton, really. A little below average, possibly, because I think very highly of him. Number 20 is David Rudiman, and my word for him is deserving. David Rudiman deserved everything he got this year. He deserved his win, he deserved his five top fives, his ten top tens, and he also deserved the other drivers that slagged him off for wrecking them. Kind of speaks for itself. Number 21 is the driver of car 20, Joey Logano. And my word for him, it's actually two words again, silver spoon, because he was fed everything that he had this year off of a silver spoon. Rookie of the year, given to him by sort of by default because Marcus Ambrose was ineligible for it for some stupid reason. Uh, and don't anyone give me that seven stars bullshit. I hate it. Uh, Ambrose should have been allowed to run for rookie of the year and then Logano would not have won. And also the fact that his competition was Scott Speed and if anyone thought that Scott Speed was going to be serious competition for Logano, they had another thing coming. And in fact, I think I even called that that uh, Scott Speed might pose a threat to Logano. Obviously, uh, uh, I never said that. <clears throat> Uh, number 22 is Jamie McMurray, and my word for him is Weber. Um, if anyone watches Formula One, you'll get this one. Uh, this refers to Mark Weber, not Bill Weber, the uh, former NASCAR commentator uh, who was thankfully fired. Uh, but McMurray has a case of the Mark Webbers, as, as the F1 Rejects guys like to put it. Uh, every time he seems to have a really good run, something just works against him, and he drops back to the field like a rock. Uh, number 23 is Kevin Harvick, and my word for him is television, because I think that's where he'll be in a couple of years and not on the grid. Uh, a couple of years, of course, meaning about five or six, because NASCAR careers tend to last that long, especially when you win the Daytona 500 like Harvick did a couple of years ago. He still did pretty well, but still, my word, television, because I think he'll have a better career in that than he does on the track, at least how his season's going. Number 24, Martin Truex Jr., and my word for him is ellipse. No one knows what an ellipse is. Those are the, whenever you see uh, someone type three dots three periods in a row, that's ellipse. No sound for it, and uh, tr that kind of uh, describes Truex's season. He had a decent car, decent car, maybe not a great car, but it was an okay car, and he really didn't do anything spectacular with it, except he sat on the pole three times, but Martin Truex Jr. has been really good in qualifying anyway. 
Number 25, I have Sam Hornish, and my word for him is Tom. And this refers to the old Tom and Jerry cartoons. And, um, of course, the whole uh, premise of the song, uh, song... Why am I calling that a song? Anyway, um, the whole premise of the cartoon is Tom, is the cat, is trying to catch Jerry the mouse, and Jerry always sets up some rather painful traps for Tom, and and or Tom's plans end up backfiring on him. And that's pretty much what I can describe Sam Hornish as. A very successful cartoon uh, series that, in fact, it's very dear to me, but uh, Sam Hornish very much was Tom this year. My word, uh, or there, eh, excuse me, number 26 on my list, Bobby Labonte. My word for him, asteroid, because he just floated around and he'll keep floating around and keep getting older and nobody will care. Uh, Bobby Labonte really dropped out of the public eye, but whenever he was sighted, caused quite a ruckus when he was kicked out of his car in favor of Eric Darnell and then drove, uh, I think it was the the Racers Group 71 car, and I think he qualified in like the top 10 or came really close to doing so on a couple of occasions and had some great runs in that car. Number 27, I'm going to get flack for this one, Robbie Gordon, and my word for him is Goomba. And anyone who's played Super Mario knows what I'm talking about because the Goombas are the little mushroom heads that you're supposed to jump on, and everybody in the grade was jumping all over Robbie Gordon this season. At least it seemed like it because poor old Robbie just couldn't catch a break this year. Even the fates would jump on his head. Anyway, number 28, Elliot Sadler. My word for him is zombie. Me and my friend Ryan, uh, we have this little running joke where um, uh, we can we um, put Elliot Sadler along with the uh, villain of Resident Evil 4 called Lord Sadler. And, of course, Lord Sadler, the villain of that uh, game, um, has his little zombie-like minions coming after you. And that's kind of how I felt Elliot Sadler was. He was kind of like a zombie. He just kept plodding around on the track very slowly, not surprisingly. Uh, number 29, I have Bill Elliott. My word for him is 12, because he made only 12 starts this year. And, uh, he made a big impact in those 12 starts, normally running, uh, a little better than we've seen the Wood Brothers car running. But other than that, nothing much to say other than Bill Elliott, other than he made 12 starts and ran fairly well in all of them. Uh, number 30, I have Casey Mears, and surname is my word for him, because that's what his entire career is based on, his surname. No talent, though. Very little talent in Casey Mears, if you ask me. Number 31, I have David Stremme, and my word for him is Taz. Nobody spun around faster than he did. Number 32, I have Dale Earnhardt Jr. I know, I'm going to get a lot of hate mail for having Dale Jr. this far down the list. My word for him, Adderall. And that is an ADD medication, for those of you who aren't aware. And um, I have to say, I take a very small dosage of it, and it works very well. So I think Dale Jr. could use a little bit of Adderall, because he didn't seem to be focused at all this year. He seemed to make a lot of really silly mistakes driving through his pit box a couple times and then bragging uh, in interviews that he was, you know, still capable of running at the cup level. And it really doesn't uh, help you much when all of your teammates make it into the chase. And yes, I'm including the Stewart Haas cars as teammates, because let's be honest here, those are Hendrick Motorsports cars. Tony Stewart just owns them in name. But um, not only that, but when you finish 25th in points, mm, not to mention you blow most of your good uh, most of your good runs or you know you kind of blow them yourself. I don't care if you're in the number four research and development Hendrick car. That was pitiful from Earnhardt this year. Uh, number thirty three on uh, the list is Scott Speed, and my word for him is mistake. I think he should have gone to the Indy Racing League instead of coming over here to NASCAR because, oh boy, he's just showing that it was a mistake. Thirty four is Reed Sorensen. My word for him rushed. He was rushed up to Cup by Chip Ganassi, rushed over to Richard Petty in the forty three car, and then promptly rushed out of the car after they realized he sucks. <laughs> Number 35, I have Paul Menard. My word for him is transparent, because once you see through the transparency of his, well, daddy's money, then you'll realize there's nothing there. There's no substance to Paul Menard, so transparent. It's probably not the best word, but hey, it was the only thing I could think of in a short period of time. Um, I, that is just a cop-out excuse, by the way. Number 36 is John Andretti. My word for him, caboose, because that's usually what he was in qualifying. He was way off the pace, and I don't think that so much is John Andretti's lack of, well, talent these days, but I think that also has to do something with the front row motorsports team just not being up to speed at all. Uh, that Those cars are really slow, but for whatever reason, he, he I think that car qualified for every single race this year. But still, John Andretti uh, didn't do too much with that car, and he pretty much stayed in the back anyway, so caboose. I would say Minardi would be a good word, too, but I want to actually make uh, it understandable to any of the uh, non-F1 fans that listen to, uh, or that are actually listening to this, or why anyone would listen to this, for that matter. Number 37, Max Pappas. My word for him, flexible, because Pappas has driven a lot in his racing career. He's driven in Formula 1. I think he's an, he's an F1 reject, too, and I think he's, I'm not sure if he's profiled on the, on the F1 reject site or not. Well, hey, it's a good excuse for you to go out and check that site out. Um, well, really not much I can say to that. He... He DNQ'd a lot, and that's why he's as far down as he is. Um, but Max Papp is flexible, my word for him. Number 38, I have David Reagan. And th uh, my one word for him is going to come on the UPS slogan, What Can Brown Do For You? 
David Reagan's answer? Nothing. And that's my word for David Reagan. Nothing. He showed very little on-track performance, and pretty much, he sucked. He was, Jane, he wasn't even in the, um, the, the, the bastard stepchild cart, Roush, uh, Fenway, and he still sucked. He only got two top tens, whereas Jamie McMurray actually won a race and got fi and I got a, a few other top tens on merit, whereas Reagan was just hopeless. So my word for Reagan, nothing. Number 39, Regan Smith. My word for him is anonymous. If you actually look at the number 78 um, furniture row racing car, you'll notice it is pretty, well, it doesn't even look like it's painted, really. And uh, the car is pretty easy to miss, so um, that kind of doesn't hurt uh, Regan, uh, or doesn't help, rather, Regan either. Um... So my word for him, anonymous. It was really hard to notice until I think he had one DNF, which I think was his first in his career. And it was mechanically, um, uh, mechanically, uh, it was a mechanical failure. Yeah. And last on my list, number 40, Michael Waltrip. My word for him, finally. Meaning, of course, finally, he's retiring from full-time competition. The only disappointment is we'll have to see, hear him more often in the booth. Now, my reject top five. I'm not doing a reject podium because this is NASCAR, not Formula One. The podium stat does not exist, but the top five stat certainly does. So therefore, I'm going to do a reject top five. This will, of course, encompass everything that happened in the entire season. So my number fifth place for reject of the year in NASCAR. I'm stealing this from you, F1 rejects. Um, uh, please forgive me. Consider this as a um, ban treatment. Anyway, reject top five. Fifth place, David Stremme. Well... Um, yeah, he crashed at Michigan. I'll let that speak for itself. That, and he had a lot of other fairly silly incidents, and a couple with Robbie Gordon in particular, I think. Number four, ESPN, for their crap coverage. I don't think I've fallen asleep through so many races before in a single season. Number three, the bronze medal for reject of the year, David Reagan. I've already gone on a little David Reagan rant, so that speaks for itself. Number two, and these are the two runaway candidates, first and second. Uh, number two for Reject of the Year, the Silver Award, Richard Childress Racing. They had a complete disaster of a season. I don't think it needs to be said. Last year, I think they had a couple cars in the chase. How many did they have this year? Zero. They also, I think, won a couple ra races last year with Jeff Burton. Again, they didn't win a single thing this year, uh, at least in Cup. I don't care about the other series running around. They're all boring as hell anyway, except, well, I should just say Nationwide's boring. Trucks are actually were somewhat interesting this year. Richard Childress Racing really needs to get their act together because they're beginning to slide back down the grid, and that is kind of a shame because this is a team that is much beloved by the fans. Uh, this, it's the team Dale Earnhardt Sr. had all his heard most of his success with, and uh, it is kind of a shame to see them going back down the grid. But the the hands down reject of the year winner. Here comes the hate mail, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Again, kind of like I said, when you make that many silly mistakes in one season and then insist it's not your fault that you're still as focused as ever, no excuse. It, it, it is quite ridiculous. Um, when most of your good runs are spoiled by your own fault, you know, you, you, actually, I'm kind of surprised he admitted to a couple of these. Not only that, but you wrecked the whole field at Daytona, basically, by deciding that, oh, well, Brian Vickers pushed me below the line. I think I'm just going to chop back up into him just because I'm Dale Jr. and I can get away with everything. Bullshit. Not for me, you can't. So, reject of the year, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and um, before everyone, before I can actually hear some of the rioters coming, um, not too far away now, hunting for my head after I declared Earnhardt Jr. reject of the year. Um, so before I uh, get killed, probably, by the, um, the oncoming masses, I'm going to sign off for now. So bye, and uh, goody, and uh, have a good night.